Hi and welcome everyone. I am Farhan and you are watching Mr. Astronomer. Hi guys I hope you are doing well. From today we are starting a series of videos related to spacecrafts which are sent by humans till now. Each video will consists of 5 spacecrafts each. More than 250 robotic spacecraft, and 24 humans, have ventured into space since we first began exploring beyond Earth's atmosphere in 1958. This section focuses on U.S. missions with science goals to study planets, moons, asteroids and comets beyond Earth orbit. ABLE-2, Pioneer-1 What was ABLE-2, Pioneer-1? ABLE-2, later named Pioneer-1, was the first spacecraft launched by NASA. Due to a malfunction, the spacecraft never reached the moon but did return data on the near-Earth environment. Launch date was October 11, 1958 8.42 and 13 seconds Universal Time and October 13, 1958 re-entered Earth's atmosphere. It was launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Launch Complex 17A Although the United States Air Force, USAF, actually conducted the mission, this was the first U.S. space mission technically under the aegis of the recently formed National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. The spacecraft was very similar in design to the ABLE-1 probe and like its predecessor, built by Space Technology Laboratories, STL. The probe was designed to record micrometeoroid impacts, take magnetic field and radiation measurements, and to obtain a facsimile image of the surface of the moon. During launch, the Thor second stage shut down 10 seconds early due to incorrect information from an accelerometer measuring incremental velocity. As a result, the launch vehicle had insufficient velocity for the probe to escape Earth's gravity. An attempt to insert the spacecraft into high Earth orbit at 79,970 x 20,000 miles, 128,700 times 32,200 kilometers, by using its thiokol built retro motor failed because internal temperatures had fallen too low for the batteries to provide adequate power. The probe did, however, reach an altitude of 71,303 miles, 114,750 kilometers, by 1142 Universal Time on launch day, according to NASA information from February 1959. The probe verified the existence of the Van Allen belts and returned other useful data on the boundary of the geomagnetic cavity. The probe re-entered Earth's atmosphere about 43 hours after launch. Investigators later concluded that an accelerometer had mistakenly cut off the ABLE stage because of an incorrect setting of a valve. In a press release soon after the launch, the U.S. Department of Defense officially bestowed the name Pioneer to the probe although it has often been retroactively known as Pioneer 1. The name was apparently suggested not by any NASA official but by Stephen F. Saliga, an official in charge of Air Force exhibits at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, who designed a display to coincide with the launch. Pioneer 2 What was Pioneer 2? Pioneer 2 was the third attempt by the United States to send a spacecraft to orbit the moon. Like its predecessors, the probe never reached its target and burned up in Earth's atmosphere minutes after launch. Asterisk this was the second official NASA deep space launch, although ground operations were handled by the U.S. Air Force. Asterisk Pioneer 2 reached an altitude of 951 miles, 1,530 kilometers. Asterisk during its brief mission, the probe did send back some scientific data. Launch date and time was November 8, 1958 slash 7.30 and 20 seconds Universal Time. It was launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Launch Complex 17A Probe burned up in Earth's atmosphere on November 8, 1958. This was the second official NASA deep space launch, although operations on the ground were handled by the U.S. Air Force. For this third launch of an STL-built lunar orbiter, engineers introduced a number of changes to the Thorable launcher. The probe also now included a new TV scanner and a new type of battery, as well as a new cosmic ray telescope to study the Cherenkov effect. Pioneer 2, like its predecessors, never reached its target. A signal from the ground shut down the Thor launch vehicle's second stage earlier than planned. 
Additionally, when the X-248 third stage engine separated, it failed to fire. As a result, the probe burned up in Earth's atmosphere only 42 minutes 10 seconds after launch at 28.6 degrees east longitude. During its brief mission, it reached an altitude of 951 miles, 1,530 kilometers, as announced in December 1959, and sent back data that suggested that Earth's equatorial region had higher flux and energy levels than previously thought. The information also indicated that micrometeoroid density was higher near Earth than in space. Investigators concluded that the third stage engine had failed to fire because of a broken wire. A NASA press release from Administrator T. Keith Glennon, 1905 to 1995, soon after the launch officially named the probe Pioneer 2. Pioneer 3. What was Pioneer 3? Pioneer 3 was the first of two U.S. Army launches to the moon. The spacecraft failed to fly by the moon and go into a heliocentric orbit as planned, but it did return valuable data about the Van Allen radiation belts that encircle Earth. Launch date and time was December 6, 1958 544 and 52 seconds Universal Time. It was re-entered Earth's atmosphere on December 7, 1958. Launch Site Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Launch Complex 5. This mission was the first of two U.S. Army launches to the moon. Pioneer 3 was a spin-stabilized probe, up to 400 RPM, whose primary goal was to fly by the moon. Two special 0.21-ounce, 6-gram, weights were to be spun out on 5-foot, 1.5-meter, wires to reduce spin to 6 RPM once the mission was underway. The spacecraft carried an optical sensor to test a future imaging system. If the sensor received a collimated beam of light from a source, such as the moon, that was wide enough to pass through the lens and fall simultaneously on two photocells, then the sensor would send a signal to switch on the imaging system, which was actually not carried on this spacecraft. Unfortunately, the main booster engine shut down four seconds earlier than planned due to premature propellant depletion. Once put on its trajectory, it was determined that Pioneer 3 was about 640 miles per hour, 1,030 kilometers per hour, short of escape velocity. It eventually reached a maximum altitude of 63,580 miles, 102,322 kilometers, and subsequently plummeted and burned up over Africa 38 hours 6 minutes after launch. In addition, the D-spin mechanism failed to operate, preventing the test of the optical system. The radiation counters, however, returned important data. Dr. William H. Pickering, 1910-2004, in a paper presented to an IGY symposium on December 29, 1958, noted that, while the results of the launch were disappointing, the dividend of radiation measurements of the Van Allen belt gained as the payload returned to Earth were of great value in defining this energy field. This data contributed to the major scientific discovery of dual bands of radiation around Earth. Pioneer 4 What was Pioneer 4? Pioneer 4 was launched by the US to photograph the Moon during a close flyby. It didn't achieve that goal but it did become the first American spacecraft to escape Earth's gravity and the nation's first probe to enter heliocentric orbit. Asterisk Pioneer 4 passed the Moon at a range of about 37,000 miles, 60,000 kilometers, instead of the planned 20,000 miles, 32,000 kilometers, not close enough for its imaging scanner to function. Asterisk the spacecraft sent back excellent data about the Van Allen belts. Launch date and time March 3, 1959 slash 510 and 56 seconds Universal Time, closest approach to the Moon March 4, 1959. Closest approach to the Sunday March 18, 1958. Launch Site Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Launch Complex 5. This was the last of five American lunar probes launched as part of a series during the International Geophysical Year although the year officially ended a few months prior. Its design was very similar to Pioneer 3, but a key difference was the addition of a monitor to measure the voltage of the main radio transmitter, which had failed for unknown reasons on Pioneer 3. 
A mechanism was on board to slow the spin-stabilized vehicle from its initial spin of 480 rpm down to 11 rpm about 11 hours after launch. Although it did not achieve its primary objective to photograph the moon during a close flyby, Pioneer 4 became the first U.S. spacecraft to reach Earth escape velocity. During launch, the sergeants on the second stage did not cut off on time, causing the azimuths and elevation angles of the trajectory to change. The spacecraft passed by the moon at a range of about 37,000 miles, 60,000 kilometers, instead of the planned 20,000 miles, 32,000 kilometers. This was not close enough for the imaging scanner to function. The closest approach to the moon was at 1024 Universal Time March 4, 1959, about 41 hours after launch. Pioneer 4's tiny radio transmitted information for 82 hours before contact was lost at a distance of about 407,000 miles kilometers, from Earth, the greatest tracking distance for a human-made object to date. The probe eventually entered heliocentric orbit becoming the first American spacecraft to do so. Scientists received excellent data from the spacecraft that suggested the intensity of the upper belt of the Van Allen belts had changed since Pioneer 3, probably attributable to a recent solar flare, and that there might be a third belt at a higher altitude. Able 4B, Pioneer P3 What was Able 4B, Pioneer P3? The mission was part of an aggressive push by the US to orbit the moon after the success of the Soviet Union's Luna program. Pioneer P-3 exploded moments after launch when the fiberglass nose fairing broke apart. Launch date and time November 26, 1959 726 Universal Time, spacecraft destroyed November 26, 1959, launch site Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Launch Complex 14. This was the first of three spacecraft designed by Space Technology Laboratories, STL for a U.S. rush to the moon in 1959-1960. Two of the spacecraft had originally been slated for Venus orbit in June 1959, but mission planners redirected the missions after the success of the Soviet Automatic Interplanetary Station, Luna 3, mission. All the scientific experiments and internal instrumentation were powered by nickel-cadmium batteries charged from 1,100 solar cells on four paddles, which made the vehicle resemble the recently launched Explorer 6. The imaging system, the same one used on Explorer 6, was comprised of a tiny 2.5-pound scanning device developed by STL that was to be used in an attempt to get a crude outline of the moon's surface if the probe achieved lunar orbit. Each probe also carried a hydrazine monopropellant tank with two thrust chambers, each with 20 pounds force, 9 kilograms force, of thrust. One probe was for lunar orbit insertion at a range of about 5,000 miles, 8,000 kilometers, from the moon. Ideal lunar orbital parameters were planned as 4,000 by 3,000 miles, 6,400 by 4,800 kilometers. The mission also inaugurated the first use of the Atlas with an upper stage combination, affording increased payload weight. During this first launch, which took place on Thanksgiving Day 1959, the nose fairing began to break away just 45 seconds after liftoff, still during first stage operation. Aerodynamic forces then caused the third stage and payload to break away and explode. The ground lost contact with the tumbling booster at T plus 104 seconds. An investigation showed that the 10-foot, 3-meter, fiberglass shroud failed because there had been no measures to account for pressure differentials as the rocket rapidly gained altitude after liftoff. Thank you for your time. If you like this video please share it with your friends. Stay tuned for the upcoming videos.